Okay. Um, as promised in my previous video, I'm going over point four and point five of the uh, five points of Calvinism. Uh, I've already gone over the five points of Arminianism, so now I'm going over the five points of Calvinism. Um, I really didn't have a stopwatch, so I had no idea how much time I had spent on the first three points, and uh, I realized that I only had I only went in six minutes to do that, so I could have finished the five points. But shorter videos are better, right, for everybody? So, uh, point number four: uh, irresistible grace. Somehow, the benefits of the atonement must be applied to the elect. This is the work of the Holy Spirit, whose inward operation enables sinners to repent and believe in Christ. In addition to the outward call of the gospel made to everyone, the Holy Spirit issues an inward call. This inward calling is made only to the elect and inevitably draws them to faith in Christ. Because God is sovereign in their salvation, it is not possible for them permanently or effectively to reject this effectual calling. God's grace is irresistible and invincible. The Spirit never fails to accomplish His saving purpose in the mind, the heart, and the will of God's chosen people. This is how the Westminster Confession of Faith describes the Spirit's gracious, efficacious work. Quote, All those whom God hath predestined unto life, and those only, He is pleased in His appointed and accepted time, effectually to call by His Word and Spirit, out of that state of sin and death in which they are by nature, to grace and salvation by Jesus Christ, enlightening their minds spiritually and savingly to understand the things of God, taking away their heart of stone and giving unto them a heart of flesh, renewing their wills and by His almighty power determining them to that which is good and effectually drawing them to Jesus Christ. Yet so as they come most freely, being made willing by His grace. And that's found in chapter 10, section 1 of the Westminster Confession of Faith. Um, point 5. The uh, perseverance of the saints. Sometimes this doctrine is called the doctrine of eternal security. It has two parts. One, that God perseveres with His people. And two, that because God perseveres with His people, they also persevere. The saints are simply the people of God. Those, those whom God considers holy through the work of His Son. The perseverance of the saints really is the preservation of the saints, for their perseverance depends on God's preserving grace. It is the faithfulness of Christ rather than the faithfulness of the Christian that brings the saints to glory. All right, so that kind of summarizes the five points. So, so we've done the, the, the five points of Arminianism, and now you can see the contrast there with the five points of Calvinism. Um, so, you know, um, you have the tulip acrostic, you have the daisy acrostic. Uh, so you can kind of compare and contrast there. Um, I guess what I would want to challenge someone, if, if, if all this is new to you, um, which I, I, you know, I don't know how many watching this video that this would be new information to. If it's new to you, or if you've already made your mind up, and I mean you're watching me, so allow me to, you know, uh, invite you to question some things. If you feel strongly against some things of the five points of Calvin. If you if you agree strongly with some of those points, I just want to ask you so that you can so that you can in your own mind sort it out to think about exactly why you disagree with it. I mean, you know, because all of it I mean we're people, right? So you know, uh, we have minds. Uh, God has given, has made us emotional beings. Um, I mean, you know, there, there's all kinds of things. Uh, our experiences, people we've interacted with, all these things, you know, affect our opinions and our thoughts. And so, I just want to, you know, issue the challenge to ask: What exactly is it that bothers you 
and and so that as we go through this series, because like I said, you know, just like with my King James only series, I start out broad, giving some historical, general facts, you know, kind of defining things, and then we get into the specifics. You know, I'm going to finish up this series dealing with the the specific Bible passages that always come up in this debate. So, um, but just to kind of to to get your mindset as to why you believe certain things are true and why you oppose the other things um, so that as we go through this you know maybe um, some of those things will be addressed and uh, again you know I want to invite anybody to leave comments at the bottom you know um, if you're a friend your comments go automatically if you're not it will pin approval and as long as you know um, you're not being too ugly um, I will I will let it post and I will interact so I think for the sake of time I really should have put them two points on the with the last video but I had no idea how far into the video I was so um, I've you know I've defined what the tulip was I've defined what the daisy uh, which I, anyway five points of Calvinism five points of Arminianism talked about Calvin I've talked about some of his works I gave you a reference if you want to get a a fairly cheap way to get all his works so that you can refer to him whatever um, so the next thing I want to talk about in the next video coming up is going to be uh, looking at specific people throughout church history who um, based on their writings their teachings their speaking so forth would agree with what is commonly called Calvinism so we'll look at that on the next video